Hello, Electronove here. Okay, so what you see here is a um, TV tuner, which you may or may not know about, which is for software, which can be repurposed for software to find radio. This means you can broad you can pick up broadcasts from around 25, 27 megahertz up to 1.4 gigahertz or more, I think, or uh, whatever anyway the higher stuff is no interest to me um, but what's annoying is I can't pick up any of like, the really low frequency lower frequency stuff say like you know down in like the 1 megahertz or 6 megahertz or whatever it might be and that's a big 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 sort of uh, bummer actually now you can buy a converter for these which is just called the ham it up converter which will um, take in the signals from your antenna boost them up by 100 megahertz and then these dongles can easily pick them up and decode them and you program in that 100 megahertz offset so that on your screen it shows the correct frequency although really it's been converted up by 100 megahertz uh, that's really cool and um, the only thing is I don't like is that it's a bit bigger than I would have liked but the board is awesome and I've seen it online and you know I've even considered buy one and I probably will at some point but um, what I found out though is there's a web page now this is a year old I didn't know about this modification until now um, what you can do is you can set the dongle into direct sampling mode and apparently if you bypass a pin sorry if you inject um, RF into one of the pins here um, pins one or two on that IC which is a better picture somewhere along here you go you can probably see that so you can see what that's pin one it's a triangle on the board there and then you've got that and it says here you can connect to pin one and two via the capacitors here capacitors C34 and 33 um, on that side yes I'm gonna try that and that should then let you tune in a whole bunch of other three frequencies that you couldn't get so that's going to be quite interesting the only problem is of course um, as, a, as a size comparison um, you know this is a tip of a pen I don't know if you can see that on here and um, you know the tip of the pen is uh, you know quite a few times bigger than the actual pad I need to solder to uh, that doesn't really bother me actually um, it's not that hard although when you look at the size of the soldering iron as well to go with that you kind of wonder how you're going to do it but it's it's not that bad actually because once you've got solder on the end of on the tip of your iron um, obviously my tip needs cleaning it looks manky um, that's because I've had it on the wrong heat it's a bit hot but anyway whatever I give that a quick clean um, and then you place a little bit a little bit of solder uh, on the tip of your iron um, which I might show you now actually one sec I bridged those connections by accident, but anyway, what I was trying to show was that it's not that hard to solder to there because generally the blob of solder brings it out a bit easier. But um, actually, um, yeah, it looks a little bit more difficult than I thought. <laughs> Probably because I'm holding the camera as well. Let me try and uh, um, yeah, I'll do this off camera and see if I can manage it. If not, I've just broken it. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so I'm just hit record again because um, it was actually, like I say, it was really easy. So, although, see, I don't think you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to try, though. Uh, where the two capacitors are, um, oh, I know, I'll show it on this screen. It might be easier. Where you have the two capacitors here and here, here and here, um, I placed a bit of solder on the iron, and when I touched it on, it bridged these two pins, which is bad. You, you don't want that because, actually, uh, the chip needs like a differential between the two or something. Anyway, so um, I didn't try and clean the, the bridge out or anything at all. All I did was, if you can imagine this solder being the mod wire, um, all I've done is I've just placed it next to the pad to the side, 
place to heat with the soldering iron with a little bit more solder on the tip actually and what happened was it was it was like it had a wicking effect it seemed to pull the solder joint from here to there and so that this mod wire stuck well to the to the joint and that that hole is now bridged that gap is uh, is no longer bridged should i say um i doubt you can see that in the camera um what can i do ah continuity perhaps um, I hope it doesn't damage the chip because obviously when you do continuity testing there's a certain amount of voltage that goes through the multimeter so taking a risk perhaps but uh, sort it. Also I don't know if I'm aiming the camera very well because I'm using my mouth. That's fine, that's isolated well enough. Otherwise it would have beeped, as you may or may not know. With a continuity test, all you're doing is you're just making sure that... So like if you were checking a fuse, for example, a fuse would beep because hopefully there's a wire that goes between the junctions. But if a fuse is blown, then obviously there's no wire or the wire has been blown apart where it's um, popped. And so you've got your terminals, but nothing in between to create, um, to complete the circuit. So the continuity really is just making sure that the flow of electricity can do that. And uh, so that's clean, that's good, that's a good start. Now I've got this really thin mod wire um, stuffs, but loads of it, like 20 meters or something. Um, I think what I might do is, um, what I may do um, is also, in addition to that, attach a pin to the second pin, sorry, a mod wire to the second pin, then bring them both out to the outside of the casing, um, because apparently if you want to attach another, uh, like a decent antenna, etc, aside from needing a ballon, you do need access to both of those pins, so we'll see. And apparently that's the eye branch. Um, in your software later, when you load it up, you'll need to set... Um, um, direct sampling and uh, you've got a choice between the I branch and the Q branch apparently the I, I branch is these two capacitors here um, for pin 1 and 2 which is pretty convenient so that's cool, there you go anyway, waffle 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 waffle, it's a good start right <coughs> hello again so oh, I hope this camera, I don't know if this camera can pick this up well, they're really close. I'll just slowly pull myself back a bit. Okay, in case you can't see, I've joined two mod wires. Uh, one to... Uh, a, so, as I said, there's two capacitors. The pad's closest to the IC. Um, you can just attach two mod wires, and then you've got pins one and two. As described here. One and two. So I've got the two mod wires here, and I've got them sort of folded back over on themselves and up this way. Uh, I don't know if it's going to interfere in, with anything up here. Um, maybe I should consider some shielding. That might be a good idea. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to hot glue them because although the connection's really, really good, um, I've really pulled on it, and you know it's it's really secure. Um, I'm going to hot glue it just to make the last bit of the connection. Uh, Worthwhile, uh, worthwhile, stable. I mean, sorry. <laughs> um, we could, yeah, could use super glue, but I'd rather use hot glue if I'm honest, because it's quite easy to get off again. Um, should I say that? Yeah, actually, I'm going to super glue it. <laughs> well, it turns out super glue is pretty rubbish for this purpose. Um, well, it's sort of working. Well, I've I've had, you know, I've um, been waiting for this to set for ages, or well, ages, five minutes, a few minutes, whatever. I'm not sure exactly. And I just really eager want to get, you know, eagerly want to get this going. So, what I'm going to do is, I've, I've had enough time to heat up my hot glue gun. <laughs>
Okay, so hot glue wins again. Um, by the way, when you mess around with hot glue, it's a good, good idea to wet your finger before you touch it. Uh, it stops it sticking to your skin because it can be really hot and sticky. Um, okay, that gives me strain relief now. So I've got the, con the connectors joined to the circuit. Blah, whatever. Um, I am half sort of toying with the idea of um, removing this connector. Alternatively, patching into the connector to see if then you can still get a good signal, if that makes any sense. So bypassing all this stuff and then... Because um, obviously I want to be able to plug an antenna into it, so... Yeah, decisions, decisions, decisions. I might do that. I might bond this to the connector with the long wires and then try to see if there's any difference in the reception, etc. So I'll let you know. Okay, so hopefully you can see I've joined to this connector pins one and two from here. Um, uh, my soldering iron could barely get the heat up enough so that I could use one of these ground connectors, ground points from this connector, because this thing need a lot of thermal mass, uh, sorry, absorb, what's the right word? Has a lot of thermal mass? Or in other words, you know, it takes a lot of heat to get that up to temperature before you can start soldering to these points because it just keeps acting as a uh, heat sink so it kept pulling the heat away. So that was a bummer. So what I did was I just scratched off some uh, some solder resist or solder mask from, uh, from an area of the ground I don't know if you can tell or see in this camera. So this whole sort of, we can see all the micro veers, the veer stitching or whatever it is, um, or the veers, door patching into the ground along here, along here, up here, up here, and that's all ground. So yeah, just scratch off a bit of the thing, reveal some copper, solder to it, you've got a ground connection, no problem. And then I just had to persevere with that middle connector. Once my soldering iron was up to temperature, it took a little bit of time to to bond to that connector to that point but it was considerably easier than trying to do one of these points for ground so um, what else is there to say I made sure when I started this I, I placed a bit of blue tape on pin one just so I knew where we were, where we were. Um, this is just a temporary sort of thing at the moment uh, it's probably going to act as an antenna as it is but yeah fun 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 <laughs> Okay, so um, I probably shouldn't have connected it directly to the centre pin on the aerial connector, um, but uh, I don't know. Um, plus I'm using the stock aerial that comes with it, which is this rubbish. So that may explain why I'm getting a lot of uh, interference. I haven't set up my own uh, 
receiving aerial or a transmitting, you know, transceiver. Look, the word is antenna. I was looking for. I don't have a proper antenna set up anyway, so um, I need one. But it's just getting around to it. Um, anyway, so this modification. Um, so I was actually do, uh, checking out on YouTube as well a uh, um, what do you call it? Yeah, random wire solution for an interior shack. So I was just doing a quick quick search on YouTube for indoor antennas and stuff but uh, then I remembered I should probably finish the YouTube video so um, da, 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 da. I hadn't read the whole document so and I just kinda got on with it apparently it says here most experimenters of this mod find that the FM interference is a problem and thus a low pass filter is necessary um, so I'll probably have to do that, um, I'm not gonna do that straight away um, Uh, because I can't be bothered, but also um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to disconnect uh, pin 1 from the centre pin of the antenna connector which you saw me solder on, uh, I'm going to get rid of that just to see if that improves anything um, and then connect the antenna directly to that uh, mod wire, the red wire and connect that up itself instead of through this connector you know, which is kind of what I should have done anyway. But then I was curious too. I wanted to see what happened if I come in here. But it uh, depends on the location I am in this room as well. The other side of the room, I actually get a lot more um, FM breakthrough. I mean, I've heard of AM breakthrough, um, which is where AM stations get into, you know, um, ham radio equipment and stuff at those lower frequencies. But it seems, yeah, there's a lot of FM interference as well. And it really, it's across the entire range, you know, it's. You know, I, I picked up something at like 2 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 4 megahertz, 4 mat 5, going all the way up and just kept going and passed and beyond up to, you know, 1.4 gigahertz or whatever it was in the uh, software in the menu. Um, you know, I think it was like 1, yeah, 1, 4. I don't know, I don't know if I'll pick it up now. Um, let's turn it on. I'm in wideband mode. There you go. Online on digital and one in five point four FM. Now that's supposed to be one oh four whatever it was, one oh four point five FM did it say? Or one oh five point four fuck whatever. Um one point four gigahertz. <laughs> you know. It, it's just across the band everywhere. Um so um, I don't know if that's because of the way I've connected this into here, maybe it's causing some kind of um, feedback and uh, it's remixing the signal somehow who knows and creating loads of um, what's the right term it's based on heterodyning but you know whatever um, yeah so that's a fail right now so next step is to remove the uh, mod wire from that connector connect the antenna directly to this give it a quick test see if there's still FM breakthrough um, if there is, um, I will probably um, leave this for today and come back to it later and deal with the low pass filtering and everything else to get rid of the broadcast band and see what we can get from there. Because other than that, I haven't been really been able to pick up any ham stuff or uh, just picked up nothing. So it's left me a little bit, um, a little bit pissed off actually. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just not working as well as I'd hoped. So. Um, which is probably down to me, so I'll fix it and let you know. Okay, so um, I had a bit of a look for stealth antennas. Now I can't remember if I've recorded information about this yet. Um, so if I have, sorry, <laughs> because I'm just going to stitch it all together at the end. Um, and if you can see there, it says um, so for 1.8 megahertz, um, 26 inch sides. We're making a square shape and five turns. Um, there should be a photo somewhere here. There you go. Now, this is from the Stealth Antennas book. Uh, there's the. Oh, sugar. Well, there's loads of cool stuff anyway. Now, um, I'm just taking this from the example. Um, sorry, what's the right word? Sample. Um, that's freely available um, online. Uh, 
rsgbshop.org and then whatever and um, it's really interesting actually I just I mean I've read this book before a long time ago um, it's in the London Hackspace library actually I believe um, or did it belong to Alec Alec JW I think it is yeah not sure anyway uh, <laughs> I digress anyway it doesn't really matter but um, yeah it might have been his actually um, I'm waffling I'm so sorry so stealthy antennas so a guy's got some PVC tube and he's created this uh, diamond shape or rotated square um, now I was interested to see if I could get this uh, SDR dongle thing to go down at, you know quite low frequencies and as you know I already got um, terrible amount of our um, of FM uh, breakthrough it just really ruined it everywhere I went it was just full of FM 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 and it was just I couldn't pick up anything useful but then you know I wasn't using a tuned antenna for that so it's my own fault but it didn't stop me being frustrated <laughs> so anyway these are the measurements that's been described uh, for different frequencies um, oh gosh I keep my mouse when I scroll sometimes sticks and doesn't let go of the little slidey thing so then I move my mouse across like that and it goes oh, everywhere anyway so uh, 7, 10 and 14 megahertz 21 inch sides I didn't go with that one um, as I say I wanted to go for even lower frequency uh, so I'm going to look around the AM sort of 1.8 sort of area broadcast band and um, it goes a lot lower than that actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, the sound quality isn't amazing, um, there's still a fair amount of interference, um, but nowhere near as bad as um, how it was originally, um, so that's pretty cool. So now when I open up SDR Sharp, um, let's have a look, um, just set it to the dongle, what? Oh, <laughs> I'm a bit stupid because um, I've actually got the app open here somewhere. Oh, okay, so at the moment I'm at 808 kilohertz. Let's just have a quick play. Okay, so I'm on 200 kilohertz now. 190 kilohertz apparently. Okay. So, um, just about here, and if you can see the uh, waterfall display there, um, I'll just press play for a moment. Ah, it's just not. I don't know why it does that, it jumped to frequency. I'm going back to 900 kilohertz. 
Oh no, sorry, it was right. Don't know if you can hear that. But essentially, it's just picked up a wide FM station, which is a broadcast station. Uh, so there's still a lot of interference that comes in and through it, and uh, so it's rubbish in those in that sense. But I was able to pick up um, a bunch of AM stations and things earlier, so I'm going to try again. Sam, thank you. Good afternoon. So Lord Windermere, ridden by Davy Russell, won a thrilling Cheltenham Gold Cup from 20 to 1. Okay, so <clears throat> that was an attempt at demoing. Um, so it can definitely tune in to you know the broadcast bands, etc. And we're down at what I've just gone up to 1.3 megahertz. So that's a massive improvement because it could never do this before. Um, you was limited to was it 25 megahertz and above, something like that. So this is going to be fun. Um, I'm really impressed about that actually. So. Um, now the design that was listed on the website, or sorry, in that book, um, uh, where is it? Again, as I said, it's the sample. Okay, it does say to use a tuning capacitor. Um, I don't have one connected at the moment, and I don't know if I have one at the right uh, capacitance, but I've got this old radio board so I'm just nibbling through the board at the moment to uh, free up the, uh, the variable capacitor there. Um, I don't have facility to properly desolder it and mess around so I'm just breaking off the board and uh, that's how I'm approaching that. Anyway, so I did be create the antenna, the aerial, whatever, and what I've done is um, on pins 1 and 2 that where we joined up to the capacitor on the inside of the RTL dongle um, what I've done is I've brought those two wires out um, they're no longer connected to that internal connector because that was stupid um, <laughs> not such a smart move maybe if I cut the board cut the trace on the board so it doesn't feed in that way the, the normal way that might be okay then I'll have a proper connector on the outside because these uh, mod wires that are hanging out they're really brittle that's what the fourth time I've resoldered that joint um, it just keeps snapping, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, that cut off abruptly because I ran out of storage <laughs> on the SD card. Because <clears throat> I'm only using a 2 gig card, so. Okay, so you may be able to see here, I've got five tons of, five, five tons of wire. I just bought this spool on eBay. Can't really remember how much. I don't think it was that expensive. 
I think there was 20 meters on here or something. It's not too bad. It's good stuff if you're not going to be bending it or flexing it in any way. Um, as I've already mentioned, the solder joint or whatever. So not the solder joint, but the wire where I joined, um, where I soldered the two pieces of this together in order to get the dongle connected. Um, yeah, around that area, it keeps snapping off. Anyway, the cardboard is just cardboard. Um, it's actually 12 inch uh, vinyl um, mailing inserts if you want to sell records online or whatever and you ship them out you need something to secure the vinyl or the records uh, I was going to sell my record collection which is over here and down at the bottom shelf as well and in those cases and blah 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 well, I never got around to it anyway I'm waffling again so five turns of wire da -da 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 -da. Um, each each thing from like there up to there is uh, 26 inches and again 26 inches corner to corner there all the way around um, that's just trying to be in, key, in keeping with what was described in that table that I showed you from the stealth antennas uh, sample of the book um, yeah I'm quite pleased um, the last things that are irritating me is as you notice there was a lot of noise in that signal even though it could decode stuff luckily using the noise reduction um, algorithm in the software which again you probably noticed I kept clicking something and adjusting the bar which meant then that I could uh, um, like I say remove the uh, some of the noise the background noise because it was really irritating me listening to that hissing oh gosh not good um, I don't know if you can see from here digital noise reduction plugin I had that enabled and then I just played with this scrolly bar until I got to a point where I could listen to the broadcast and not be too sick of the background noise um, yeah there's not much more to say to that really um, yeah I can't think of anything yeah just a tuning capacitor I guess um, but I don't think I really need it because well I'm already picking up stuff as, as you will have heard and it's kind of around the area that I wanted to uh, to pick up so I'm happy about that and um, what else um, I haven't picked up any ham stuff yet, but I'm hardly a guru, so I'm, I'm going to need to find out the frequencies and uh, etc, etc. Uh, so that would be interesting. Um, I know with this aerial, I'm picking up way more than I would have, because um, I've tried, um, you know, with the original one and etc, etc. You know, not good, not good, not good. So... Yeah, I, th I, can, I think that's a hack. I think that's done. Um, it does what it's supposed to do. It's not 100% perfect, but there's a lot of uh, warnings about that. There are, There is a little bit of FM breakthrough, but once this antenna is connected, this aerial weather is connected, um, and like now where I've got it turned in this orientation, um, I don't know if you can see that with the light coming in from the window, because um, I've, I've, I've moved it around, I'd put it in front of the window, over here, etc. Um, it does seem to... Um, it is directional, actually. It does seem to be directional, so that's cool. So you can get rid of some of the background noise and stuff. Uh, what else? Uh, the power supply for my laptop. Um, obviously, <laughs> um, yeah, this can pick it up, and it really just spreads a load of crap across the the wave, uh, the spectrum, and uh, the waveform, waterfall rather. Uh, also, something else connected on that line is my. Uh, El Chupo, was it Vichy VC8145 dual display multimeter? It's a load of crap. I shouldn't have bought it. I bought it because a friend of mine said, Oh, you know, it'll be alright, it'll be good enough. Da, 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 da. I've never used it really. I have, but when it's plugged in, because I, I have a plug set up for basically my tools on the workbench, like my soldering iron, uh, hot glue gun, and stuff like that. When I plugged that in, the wow, loads of noise came up again. So the power supply inside of that is rubbish. The switch mode power supply for my laptop just dominates the, the, the spectrum. But you'd expect that, wouldn't you, really? Um, bah, 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 bah. Funny enough, my fan doesn't seem to uh, introduce any noise. I had a quick check earlier and didn't really notice any problems, so that's nice. Um, what else is there? No, I think that's it. That'll be a wrap. So uh, I realised this was very long and potentially boring at times. Sorry about that. But it does work. 
and that's the key so I'm happy and I'll refine it where I can and if I actually a couple of things I'm thinking of doing but I don't know if it'll make any difference is where we joined onto those capacitors maybe if we remove the capacitors completely um, <clears throat> so breaking the connection from the rest of the circuit maybe we might get a cleaner signal um, again I don't know it's just an idea um, I might try that um, what else um, also the tuning like with the low pass filter that may make a big difference I don't know though um, yeah, there we are. Thanks a lot for watching, listening and all that stuffs.